Well, joining us now is Stephanie Eckroach. She's executive director of a Kansas Dairy, and uh, we're going to spend our segments this week uh, celebrating uh, Kansas Dairy as it is Dairy Month. So, uh, Stephanie, uh, I'm sure you always have a lot going on, and and this will be no exception, but really kind of a time to pause and, and, and uh, celebrate a very important part of Kansas agriculture. Absolutely. Um, dairy farmers are excited about May, uh, or excuse me, June, and uh, we uh, like to celebrate our dairy products and uh, working hard this month, doing some social media uh, broadcasts to um, help uh, promote and give people a more positive, maybe, attitude about uh, the world in general, and you should eat dairy and eat ice cream. Delicious. It is. We're going to talk about some of those things, but I want to remind folks about but five, six weeks ago, we talked to a young producer, Justin Oldie, uh, and uh, some of the things that he's doing. And there are other of uh, your uh, dairy men and, and dairy women that have opened up their farms and to really tell the story, make that connection. Because unless you're really lactose intolerant, uh, you <laughs> like uh, milk and those, those dairy products. Absolutely. Um, we've got lots of dairy farmers that are reaching out to their communities, especially and you know, with the current situation of, of America and the world. Um, just one example is the uh, uh, Rokey Road Holsteins out of Sebetha, Kansas. Uh, they worked with Midwest Dairy to get a cooler into their community assistance center and uh, the Kansas Dairy Commission and the Rokies are working together and we're filling that um, uh, cooler for the food pantry. And uh, so we'll have a photo out about that next week. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we're also traveling across the state this month. Um, just Friday, Thursday and Friday last week, I missed, I visited 11 dairy farms and we uh, got to take pictures with the dairy farmers. They showed me around their farms. They even did a little video for Farm Bureau to uh, show what a robotic dairy uh, machine looks like up close. So we're doing lots of things this month to help promote dairy and just give everybody a little more positive feeling about uh, the world as it is today. Well, Stephanie, we know that there's been challenges throughout production agriculture. The dairy industry has really been affected and maybe the story hasn't been as big in Kansas as it has say in Wisconsin, but uh, uh, still Kansas dairy farmers uh, need support and they need us to utilize their product as well. Right, um, you know, early on when um, COVID-19 uh, came along, um, it was kind of the perfect storm uh, for not only dairy farmers, but a lot of agriculturalists. But um, when restaurants shut down and schools shut down, we had all this milk and um, we're not able to, you know, just switch gears that quickly and bottle. And so there was some confusion um, with the consumers about, hey, why are you pouring milk down the drain? Well, Milk is a perishable product and it has to be used within a certain amount of time. You want it to be safe and healthy and fresh. And so we were forced in the state to do a little bit of disposal. Um, I think that's kind of winding down now and we're not seeing that as much. Uh, but the dairy farmers responded to that and they actually cut back production a little bit and were able to um, help um, stop some of that disposal going on and they don't like to waste anything any any more than anybody else does um, so and they're pretty creative they came up some, with some different ways to do that and um, so they they've just done a great job and um, they're you know cows have to be milked and uh, they're just plugging on and doing what they do the best way they can and uh, I have to commend them because they are awesome agriculturalists and so proud to be representing them Stephanie Eckroat with Kansas Dairy. It is Dairy Month throughout the state in June. Let's take a break, come back with more in just a moment. 